just got back from speaking at a bunch of conferences. I saw... Just got back from speaking at a bunch of conferences. There were a lot of talks about microservices, and I wanted to delve in a little deep. Just take it easy, man. You can't handle the truth. Forget it, Donnie, you're out of your element. That's just my opinion, I could be wrong. So let's start with the obvious. What is microservices? It's a type of architecture that implies that you should be building things in silos, where not only the backend APIs, but even the databases are all segregated from each other. And the benefits lie in the idea that you can more easily scale individual parts of your application as they're needed instead of having one large monolith. Because I think we've all heard monoliths are bad, monoliths are awful. And microservices is one in a line of things trying to solve the monolith problem. So it goes back to client server, so it goes back to multi-tier, n-tier, Microsoft DNA. It's all been trying to solve these common problems with large products. Because of the nature of microservices, it means that you don't have to develop in just one or two languages. Each tier could be suited to whatever sort of technology is required for them, and that's good. You can think of these services as being much simpler. A lot of what we're seeing with like minimal API and the way that Node does APIs sort of implies this issue. It also means that you can use the data source that matches best the kind of data you're dealing with. You might have a large document database for your product listings, but have a you might be using a document database for your product so that you can quickly look through and load lots of data. And then you might have actually the orders and the payments and the invoices in something like a relational store. It allows you to not have to pick the one thing that's going to work for all cases. And all of this is great. You'll see this in a lot of talks. I recommend viewing on YouTube or going to see the excellent course by Jill Kareen on microservices on Pluralsight. Big fan. But I'm talking to a lot of clients that are running smaller businesses. They're not running the next Netflix or Ticketmaster. They're solving smaller problems, trying to keep their doors open, right? And so what I'm being asked is, should we be looking at microservices now? And the reality is probably not. I think microservices are solving some very interesting problems, but the simplicity you get from building microservices, that silo of single responsibility that they're implying is thwarted. It's thwarted by the complexity of inter-service communication. And this is really leans on heavy what the architectural style is really about. And that is within one tier, you may be calling another tier's APIs. You may be using message queues or message buses or all these different methods for doing it. And we have some real questions about how easy that is to do. Again, when you're trying to create a large scale operation, this is absolutely a great solution, but a great solution that comes with a lot of complexity, and a lot of complexity we haven't thought about solving before. Essentially, you're making a trade. You're trading for simplicity of development for the complexity of deployment. Inter-service communication becomes somewhat an afterthought where you have to be able to communicate between these tiers as we take our users from one tier to the next as we do different sorts of operations. And this gives you a ton of flexibility, but it also limits you to how much time you can spend on these issues that aren't business issues. Another thing I'm concerned about, and I haven't seen a great solution for this, is what about transactional issues? There are transactions that are going to cross these tiers, and how do you deal with them? This is a long-standing problem of the notion of things like eventual consistency, so having a transactional idea, but not really having a true transaction behind it. How do you deal with compensation in a long running transaction? Now, unlike the complex days where this, we thought we could just solve it magically and then it became a big mess, not everything needs a transaction. Let me be really clear about that. But some things super do. Sometimes you need to make an order and hope that the order has stock. And if it doesn't have stock, you're going to have to write the code that handles that 
Do you want to cancel the order? Do you want to continue the order and wait? And all of that work doesn't mean you can't do it. It just is adding some of the complexity that maybe if you were in a monolith system, you wouldn't have to. Even if you ignore the transactional issues and assume you can write code to do that, what do you do with that data afterwards? Because we're using BI and data warehousing and a bunch of different things, including reporting, to try to cultivate information from that data. And when you're dealing with different data stores as well as separate siloed data, that's a harder thing that you also have to solve. I'm left with an important question for you. Well, I don't have all the answers related to microservices. I certainly don't have the experience that a lot of people have with microservices. I sit here suspicious and I want to ask you, what do you think about it? Do you think this is beneficial or not? Because ultimately we have a new problem. For greenfield or brand new projects, microservices can be really useful in getting the job done. It does involve this extra complexity, but maybe you think it's worth that extra complexity. And it might be, it really might be. But when I'm talking to people about their monoliths and trying to separate them into microservices, I think you're talking about a huge chore. And sometimes it's more important to get new functionality to users than to change architecture. Architecture in itself is not a solution, is not a way that you can then in your next job say, hey, I built a microservice, right? If you're not running into any of these problems like scalability or like being able to version and deploy separate parts of your application separately, you might not need to worry about it for your project. Should you keep it in the back of your mind as a way that you can solve new problems? Absolutely. And I would take, as usual with me, a grain of salt with microservices. Are they the next big thing? Are they going to solve everyone's problem by everyone running microservices? I don't think so. So go out there and learn as much as you can about microservices. It might be valuable to the project you're going to be building, the project you're maintaining, or even the next project you do. But keep your suspicion handy. Thanks for watching me and my rants. I'm going to ask you, as usual, to like and subscribe. That really helps me. And of course, you can visit all my Pluralsight courses at seanlink slash psauthor. That's S-H-A-W-N-L dot I-N-K slash psauthor. Thanks again. Mm -hmm.